Hey guys, my name is Kenny Wolf, and welcome to the end of the world. Because that's basically what happened, right? Because our, you know, our bestie Rose totally messed up our house, and then a meteor probably destroyed the Earth. But seems like there's another part, you know. I mean, there, there's other, obviously, more parts. I don't know what's gonna happen considering the meteor like exploded our house. So I'll see years in the future, but not many. What happens? A wayward vagabond recalls a stuttering step in the sun bleached dust. What is this? Uh, let's click on this, I guess. Oh, what is these? It's a vagabond. Who is this? What is this? It's magical. Act 2. Oh my god, it's Game Facts again! Whoa, what is this? Esper Beta Fact Walkthrough by Tentacle Therapist. This is amazing. Caveats and condolences, I'd be inclined to dispense with the trite even under less- Wait, hold on, like, let me read the table of contents first, I forgot about that. Okay, that's unimportant. Yes, okay, let's go back to reading this. I'd be inclined to dispense with a trite even under less pressing circumstances. Needless to say, I'll forgo the inscrutable SC banner which typically heralds the striking freefall of these documents. I'll also resist, resist the urge to brandish any copyright marks or the particular neurosis that concerns itself with the death of the utterly mundane. I'll allow other deranged prospectors to stake claims on their worthless plots as the woods burn around them. My introduction will be sparse. There'll be no majestic prose blustering into the sails of a gal gallon with galleon? Galleon? As we embark on this voyage together, nor will there be any ham-fisted prose whipping its limbs under a bedsheet like a retarded ghost for that matter. I won't set the stage or dim the lights. The mood you will see will be set soon enough. Since you are reading this, chances are you have installed this game on your computer already. If this is true, like many others, you have just participated in bringing about the end of the world. But don't beat yourself up about it. There was never anything you could have done to prevent it. The end is happening right now as I type and as you read. I have come to understand that we were always doomed through our collective ignorance and now further doomed by those few who know and struggle to flee. If you're lucky, you'll be among the smaller subset of the latter who are successful. What I mean is while that game you install is just one more grinding slab of rock sealing our planet's crypt, it is also your only hope to live. I'm presently faced with the same conundrum as you, and though I speak with more experience, my own outcome is far from assured. I will play the game, as much of it as there is to play, and record my findings here. If you want to live, you will do as I instruct. My condolences. Esper Beta, why are you killing us like this, man? It's an excellent walkthrough, though. It's a walkthrough of life. Was that under my bed? What the hell? Dad, you don't even know that we're all about to die. Well, that's creepy. Wait, is this what the meteor brought? Oh, John took a bite of the apple. So it didn't totally trash our house? Oh boy. I think it took us to another dimension. Oh, actually it destroyed everything but us. That is somehow worse. The kernel divides. The two halves go their separate ways, leaving li ways leaving behind the sprite potion portion. What? What does that mean? You can't divide a kernel. Boy. Oh, isn't- This is totally just the harlequin or the jester or whatever. 
What is left of the sprite undergoes a mysterious transformation. For a moment, you thought you heard someone say "boy," as if whispered in the periphery of your awareness. It was probably just your imagination, though. You there, boy? It's talking to me. Okay, click this. Click this or click this. To walk around, use the mouse arrow keys or WSD keys. Click on various objects to open command menus for them. Outstanding flash programming by Alexis Gankro? Baygesner? Interesting, interesting. Oh my god, you can walk in this thing. It's a full blown, like, flash thing. I still don't have arms though. You there, boy. Okay. Boy, open this door and walk through. Oops, hold up. I'm not ready to go there yet. I wanted to check out. Oh. Jesus Christ, what the hell's going on? Wait, how do I go back up on the roof, man? I wasn't done yet. Was it here? Okay, that's not it. Goodness gracious, what is going on? Your plumbing appears faulty. Man, Rose did such a piss poor job of fixing the bathroom. It's almost it was it would almost certainly certainty. Certainly be a mistake to try to use the toilet. You guess you could just pee over the edge of the cliff. I don't encourage that. Plumbing appears faulty. Okay, it seems like I said the same thing. Man, how the hell did I go back on the roof? This room is still locked. Why do you lock? The ghost clown, do something. Why is everything all weird? Is this because I'm zoomed in? Hold up, let me zoom out for a Really quick. Okay, it just cuts off like that. So it's normal, right? Well, I'm zooming back in then. You're not the one who's supposed to prototype it. The s server user is supposed to do that. Where the bejesus am I? What do you want, dude? Leave me alone. Oh crap, how do I get, like, anywhere? Okay. I. Hmm. This huge sewing machine. What was it say? God, that's appeared too fast. The punch card seemed to contain the constructions for carving a totem of a certain shape. You guess maybe other punch cards will produce different shapes? It bears further exploration. How the heck did I get in a roof? Wasn't it here? This funny man text. You should ignore it. Just looking at the cover cracks you up. What a great book. Harry Anderson is your hero, and Mike Caveney's glowing treatment of the man does him every bit of justice. You have to give this another read soon. Okay, I don't know how to go back there, but there is like weird, creepy ass blood all over my bed, so that's oh, very worrying. The bunny is not in the box. I said the bunny is not in the box. Why couldn't the bunny be in the box? Oh god. What is this stuff? I think it's bunny blood. My chums be talking to me? This is very neat, man. John, are you there? This is Tentacle Therapist. It seems you're still connected to the internet. Rose is trying to get in touch with you. You will apply in a moment once you have fully assessed your situation. Um... Is there anything else to look at? It looks different now. After you bit the apple, your whole house seems to, have, seemed to be transported somewhere. Then the apple disappeared and a kernel sprite underwent a transformation. Aside from the change in appearance, the transformation doesn't seem to have any relevant ramifications. Are you sure? Oh, there's a lot of ramifications going on. What is this? Uh, what do you want, dude? His name is John, you nincom poop. It's weird. It's this whole dumbass it would probably come in handy for cleaning up this weird mess in your room. Not that it's a huge priority, though. Oh boy. At least your tire swing remains unmolested. A tree without a tire swing is like... Like a house without a surrounding neighborhood, you guess. This is pretty intense. For a flash... Animation or... Is this animation? This is flash, definitely. I don't know what... Whoa, whoa, this is my door. Rose sure did a number in your house, but you guess you... She didn't manage to save your life. You guess. Uh... Well, okay, enough dilly-dallying. A boy quit all this scurrying around. For the last time, this boy's name is John. John Egbert. 
Fine, Ja, return to your quarters. Who's talking to me? Is it the jester dinghy? You go back up to your bedroom, tiptoeing around this weird petroleum-based sludge. I think it's blood of whatever weird things were hiding under your bed. Now, Ja, respond to your friend unit. My friend unit. Ja, are you there? Tentacle therapist is now an idle chum. Hey, yeah, I'm here. And not dead, I think. I know. I've been watching you scramble through the house like a lunatic. You should have answered me sooner. Oh man, sorry. I was looking around for my dad. I can't find him anywhere. Actually, I didn't even try finding him. I didn't go downstairs, so... Have you seen him? No, I'm sure he'll turn up. We have more important things to address right now. Yeah, like, where am I? I don't know that either. But I've determined your neighborhood was destroyed by the meteor. Wherever you were transported, it saved you from the impact. Oh, well then everyone else is dead. I've been reading reports in the news. Over the last few days, there have been many smaller meteor collisions with people's homes around the world. Hold up, Rose is like now in a... Yeah, well, she's back on Earth. I'm in another world. Very bizarre. Okay, and they seem to be getting bigger. Yours was the biggest they've identified so far. Wow, okay. So then I guess if this is all the game's doing, then the point is for us to save the world? Perhaps. Then we better get moving and figure this game out. Yes, but wait. We should retrieve your PDA. Yeah, again. It will help to keep tabs on each other while you investigate. I think I can get you closer to it. If I can replenish our grist supply somewhat. There may be a way to recycle some that we already use. Okay. I'll meet you out on the balcony. Wait, Rose, one thing. What? You never even wished me a happy birthday. Um, hello? I was working on something to send you, but I was running late with it. I didn't want you to think I believe meager well wishes alone was suffice for the occasion. That said, happy birthday, John. Ha, oh jeez, that is silly. Anyway, thanks. Yeah, happy birthday, John. The world is destroyed now, but happy birthday. First, take the fabric item on the floor there. What fabric item? Oh, that weird towel that we saw earlier? The towel? Why? Oh, well, you're the boss. You capture log the towel. What now? Do us a purple text. What purple text? I don't see any purple. Oh, this is purple? I thought this is blue. Do as the purple text says to the balcony. John makes his way to the balcony per your awkwardly worded request. Wait. Take that. The blue wobbly thing. You whimsically decide to capture log the totem which was used to create the apple tree earlier. Ja, recycle the grits as was dictated by your cohort. Cohort. Cohort! John cannot do anything with the grits as of this moment. That is up to the Esper player. The Spur player, as I, I like to say. I see? What the hell just happened? I think the Esper player is Rose, right? Yes, that was a vice. Rose deletes the perfectly generic items or objects. Six units of build gris are restored to your gris cache. Yeah, we can build stuff. Maybe. Oh wow, are you telling me to kill myself, Rose? Don't appreciate it. Rose expends the gris to drag a new plank from the balcony in the direction of the PDA. Oh. PDA, right. Well, I could have. You know, use some help with the elevation, too. John run across precarious platforms swiftly. He doesn't want to run across it. I don't want to either. John isn't sure about that. It's a long way down. Boy, I said make haste on the narrow catwalk. John is very nervous about the idea, and the strident tone of your commands is starting to make him a little upset. Fine. Proceed as your level of comfort dictates. Oh, thanks for bringing that up. I did that. <laughs> That's not what I was expecting. You cautiously walk within range of the PDA. Rose retrieves it. Why couldn't she just bring it to me? Then I don't see the point of all of this. Now take it. Oh, what the hell did you just launch out? Oh, what the heck is this? When did I pick that up? Bizarre stuff going on. You get the PDA, you're launching one of the Harlequin figurines into the night. You kiss that one goodbye. Goodbye. Mwah.
just one arrow command will suffice. I guess that's an arrow command, I don't know. Thanks. Looks like you're not the only one trying to locate your father after the disaster. These boring men are uninteresting. What the hell are you doing, John? John, are you okay? You seem a bit tentative. I'm fine, I guess. Since I got here, I feel compelled to do these weird things I don't really want to do. By some kind of voice that I can't really even hear? I don't know, it's, it is hard to explain. Perhaps the early symptoms of an anxiety disorder, like post-traumatic stress? Yeah, maybe, who knows. Well, if you can pull yourself together, there are a few more things we should try. Like prototyping the kernel sprite again, if possible. We should hurry, my laptop battery won't last forever. Okay, I'll go back inside. Why is it not plugged? Oh, right, she ran out of power, forgot about that. No, don't do that. Hop off this ledge onto that card. Why in the world would I do that? This stupid kernel sprite is trying to get me to kill myself. What? No, that sounds incredibly dangerous. A whole bunch of arrows. Arrow, 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 arrow. John doesn't want to do it. Now you're just being a pest. Which turnip truck do you just tumble out of anyway? Who are you? Years in the future, but not many. Dot dot dot. An unsealed tunnel welcomes hot desert air into its stagnant depths. Wait. What? This is like an adventure within an adventure, man. This must be the real world, you know, after we destroyed it. Whoa. Where are you getting these footage from, man? Boy, oh, you're the one that's typing these messages. Wait a minute. Are you sitting, like, at my laptop in the real world? Typing these messages to me? You there, boy. Oh, very strange. Wait, is that person Rose? No, that doesn't make sense, right? An examination of the basics. Upon connecting with the client user, you, the server user, will be met with a control panel allowing you to manipulate your co-player's environment. You will find that you are allowed to deploy four items at no expense. Three of these are rather large machines and one is a punch card. It's quite possible that you have already deployed some of these items before reading this. If this is the case, and you have activated the machine called the Cruxtruder, such that it displays a countdown, you must proceed to section A100 of this walkthrough immediately. You just set off a meteor, you know, it's bad. The life of the client user depends on it, and if your co-player has activated this device in your environment too, then yours does as well. But if not, please refrain from doing anything with a crux shooter, aside from merely deploying it. This will buy us some time to think things through properly and to go over the basics of the game before you find your soft, easily punctured head in the jaws of the lion. As mentioned, there are four items to consider, each playing a role in a process which appears to have a singular purpose to manufacture objects out of thin air. Designers of the game, judging by the language used, regard this process as a sort of alchemy. This may allude to complexities in the production process yet to present themselves, but for now, the variety of objects you are able to create remains quite limited. The items in question are the crux shooter. Again, tread lightly with this one. The totem laugh or Leif, still don't know how to say that word, the Alchemeter, and the pre-punch card. I will describe how these devices work in conjunction with each other, and I will use the analogy of having a key made at a hardware store to make, help you understand. First, deploy all of these objects in convenient proximity to each other. Be sure not to block doors or pathways with them. You can always revise the dimensions of the room to make space for them, but I advise against this or even experimenting with the, pro the function. Doing so comes at the expense of build grist a commodity which appears to be at a premium at the onset, and one you'd be best advised to save for later. The Crux Shooter. Removing the lid signals the moment your life becomes a great whirling batshit pandemonium, somewhat resembling the chaos of an especially ethnic wedding. Somewhere a South uncle deliberately shatters china on the floor, muddy livestock is decorated and then lost track of. The question, whose meal is this? at times can be heard over the din. This is now your reality. But aside from that, it marks the beginning of the process I am about to describe. The countdown begins, yes. Also, an entity called the Kernel Sprite is released. But neither of these things are all that relevant to this process, to my knowledge. More of these things later. What is relevant is the unlidded Crux Shooter's ability to dispense Cruxite dowels. It will dispense at least one. Though I suspect it is capable of producing more, giving parameters I'm not yet familiar with, 
In my key making analogy, these dowels represent the uncarved pieces of metal which the hardware store employee retrieves from a drawer or a rack and sets about carving into a key. The two following items are needed to do the carving. The pre-punched card is a simple Silidex card containing an item. There is evidence to suggest the specific item it contains is variable from session to session. The card I deployed contained a blue apple. Yours may be different. It shouldn't matter, hopefully. Additionally, the card, as you may guess, is punch. Like one used with antique computing systems, the pattern of holes comprises data which I believe corresponds to the instructions for creating the item the card contains. That it is pre-punch, suggests there is a way to punch an unpunch card, possibly imprinting it with the data for the item it contains, though no mechanism for this has presented itself yet. But the data on the card cannot be used to create the item directly. There is a middleman. The middleman is the totem of lace. This is a very thorough walkthrough. Amazing. The totem lathe is essentially the key carving machine. It will carve into your cross-eyed doll a pattern of grooves and contours, the sort which makes a key unique. The instructions for this pattern are supplied by the punch card, which is inserted into the lathe pre-activation to configure its chisels. Once the doll was carved, you have a totem serving as your key, which can then be used to unlock the card item through the alchemeter. But at this point, I will diverge from my key making analogy and switch to a barred coal analogy, which is not a terribly strenuous sleep to make, since the concepts of a key and a barcode are essentially the same, one being a unique pattern of grooves, the other of varying black lines. The alchemeter, if you place a cruxite dowel, carve or uncarve on the alchemeter's small pedestal, its robotic arm will scan the contours of a laser, hence the barcode analogy. This is the machine's way of reading the data originally imprinted from the card and transforming that data into a physical object. It is a 3D printer, basically. Though typically this is not done without expense, I believe, an uncarved dowel results in the creation of a perfectly generic object, which is a seemingly useless green cube. It costs 2 units of villagers to make and I do not advise you to waste resources on it. There appears to be many- Oh, let me read that again. There appears to be many other varieties of grist, ostensibly used in combinations to create different sorts of items which possibly offer some insight into the game's use of the term alchemy, but quite conveniently there is an exception to this. Creating the item on the pre-punch card costs nothing. This is good because creating this item turns out to be essential. Now, you did, yeah. <laughs> now that you know this, you can in your own time begin the process. Once you initiate it, naturally there is no going back, so best to be prepared. But you probably shouldn't drag your feet too long. As I mentioned earlier, this is your only means of escape. When you're ready, be prepared to follow the steps in the next section swiftly. Okay, this is the A100, which she said, go to immediately if your clock is ticking. So your crook shooter is ticking, do this to live. And I'm going to leave this here, guys, so you, we can find out how we're actually going to live in the next part. Also, who the heck is even reading this walkthrough? Is this like, are, are we the reader? reading this walkthrough and we're like playing this game again because John is already in another world and Rose seems to be still on earth presumably but there's also another person what is it like years in the future but not many which is probably just after the meter hits so if that's not Rose then someone's house or home got hit with a meteor and they're like now somehow communicating with John in another world and kind of like giving him commands I guess but it's kind of weird because they're like sitting at a computer which kind of seemed like it would be John because you know John was sitting at his computer and chatting with his buddies so there might be like some weird time traveling crap going on here I don't know but you know the clock is ticking so we gotta do this stuff to stay alive and we're gonna pick this up in the next part so thank you so much for watching this episode please let me know what you think about this very intensive walkthrough job nice done right and i will see you guys in the next video